Good evening. Uh -oh. We got a problem, Houston. Good evening. No fun. Good evening. Oh, they see you here. Say it again. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> that may be fuddled. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> you would do that all night. <laughs> I have to, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I think, good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me now? Is it too loud? What are you doing, little red? Well, it's hot in here. Good evening. Pastor. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. It is great to be in the house of the Lord. It is good to see Chen Wei. Thank you for braving the torrential down uh, flows, the storms, and and um, it wasn't this hot until Rich Woods walks in, walk in the room, and then he just lights up the whole place. Just like so good to have Teresa back with us, and she was uh, sunny Florida last she week. Brought the sunshine. And she brought this. Hold on, you poor thing. You were really suffering, we could, we could tell. So. All right, well, let's go ahead and, and uh, open up with a word of prayer, and we'll get going. Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you for bringing my brothers and sisters here safely. Thank you that you are so good. You are so good. You are better to us than we deserve. And Lord, we praise you, and we ask that you'll be with us tonight, and that everything said and done glorifies your name, that you are lifted high and exalted, that you are our God. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Next week, next Wednesday, we will not be having our Bible study. We will be having our uh, annual business meeting. It's so hard to believe. Yes, we are in November. It's so hard to believe we're in November already. So next week is not our uh, Bible study. It is our annual business meeting. There will not be kids or, or uh, Kid City or youth because we want to encourage the people there. Uh, we need you to be here. It's very important for you to be here. Uh, because what we're going to do is we're going to look at some bylaw changes. We're going to, of course, uh, look at some things that have gone on, and, and um, we really praise the Lord of what God's doing. But uh, it's very important you're here uh, next Wednesday at 6.30, and we hope to get you in and out in an hour, and, and uh, that's my hope. And, and so, uh, but the bylaw changes are huge because we're, we're going to be uh, kind of, the, we had a bylaw committee that worked really, really, really hard, and they did a great job, and the council then worked through it and did a great job. And so then as a congregation, as we can come look forward to see this is what we want. So that is next Wednesday. Next Wednesday is our annual business meeting. There are, there are copies of the bylaw changes and copy of the informational reports down at the, uh, at the Welcome Center if you want to grab one and kind of kind of look at that so uh, all right well before before you uh, I open up to you to where you've seen God lately I have to say where I have seen God and uh, I'll tell you what I I don't like to throw the word around miracle glibly uh, some some people I know that you know that their car starts it's a miracle no it's not a miracle you just have the right gas in your car. Uh, and sometimes people, you know, oh, well, it's a miracle. Well, sometimes that's a miracle. But I, I don't, I, I really like it to be a miracle for it to be a miracle. And I, and I believe I witnessed one. Uh, uh, many of you know Chuck McConnell, our, our uh, most lovable Chuck McConnell. Uh, he had back surgery yesterday. And this was very, very extensive. For those of you who, who know Chuck, you know his back has been hurting him just excruciatingly. He's kind of been, been hobbled over, been bent over for, for a while. And this, this was pretty extensive back surgery. Pretty, pretty big, big stuff. Uh, so I was there at surgery with him yesterday. And uh, a couple hours before the service started, I went up and spent a couple hours with him. I walked in, and he says, well, I'm going home. I said, you are. And he said, a miracle has happened. So what are you talking about? He says, I feel no pain. 
I am, he is completely standing straight up. He's gained about a foot. <laughs> I told him, I said, you're, you're a foot taller. He is standing straight up. He is walking without any pain. Wow. That is just, a, it, it's a miracle, folks. It, it, and, he, and he is like, he is, I was like, okay, well, now settle down. <laughs> he is wow. And last night he was doing the uh, one step closer, and he had two nurses who actually said, what are you doing? And he started talking about it, and they said, can we do that too? And he says, yeah. And so he kind of directed to him. So not only is he feeling better physically, but he's also using this as an opportunity to witness and to make an impact. So the um, first thing he says, he says, uh, you need to tell the people prayer works. And I want you to know prayer works. Amen. And, and so um, you, you, for those of, of us who know Chuck, we love Chuck. But this, this is a, this is a, 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 a wound Chuck. Uh, I mean, just a smile, does not feel in any pain. It, it, it is incredible. And so he mm, is probably in the process of going home right now. Uh, probably we were looking at about uh, six or seven. But uh, that, I, I just, I cannot believe it. So extensive major back surgery that was, could have been very problematic that he was being told that he may not be able to really move around for six weeks, is the next, well, they, he was walking around last night, and today, helped him off the bed, and he did, and he's standing straight up, and he's saying, let's go. And my mouth just went. <sighs> so folks, God answers prayer. Amen. So I saw God there uh, just incredibly, incredibly so. All right, where have you seen God lately? Where have you seen God? I think Carol's brother has. Oh, testimony. I like that. All right, all right. Yeah, I, my brother called me, and he was in severe, severe pain. And he said, and um, he had this long, and he said, I am so in such pain. And he was going to go to the doctor. So he went to the doctor, called me back, and said, I don't know what I'm going to do. He says, they're not going to. I can't see that surgeon until the last of November. And he said, I am in so much pain. I said, well, what? I said, maybe you could go to the emergency room and they'll take you in faster, get you in there faster or whatever. But I called Linda and I said, put my brother on your prayer chain. I said, he's in such severe pain. He just can't stand it. And so they, she did. And he called me that morning and said the lump was gone, he slept all night, and there, it, he's no longer. Praise the Lord. Amen. So God does things. Yes, Amen. he does. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Someone else, where have you seen God lately? I saw God in uh, <coughs> protecting me and my family. I was having van trouble, and both times I was able to get off of the road safely before it died. So God was watching out for us and protecting us and keeping us safe. Amen. Okay, so, Dylan. Um, it's not like recent. It's actually like way far back because I have a problem with my like it's bad things in my life that just they play over and over in my head. So like I and I've seen a lot of the times where it has been really really bad with like when my dad was sick. God gave him more time with us, because when I was two, he had cancer, and he could have died then, and he was going to die, um, and he's been in a coma, he's been in hospital, and he's been in a hospital for a year, it's just, it's been crazy. Amen, amen, amen. thank you. Amen. Someone else, someone else, where have you seen God lately? Mm -hmm. I'm quiet tonight. <laughs> where have you seen God lately? Ms. Helen. I thank God for a, a pool of oil on the garage door because um, Chuck discovered that one pipe went to the brake fluid and it was brake fluid and it was almost gone. Mm. Okay. I don't know all the details because I don't know about car stuff, but I just know that um, 
live on the hill we want, right? <laughs> yes. Amen. We who don't live on the hill want you to have brain fluid. Yes. yes. We do. Oh, okay. Amen. Isn't it interesting? Sometimes God allows something, a problem, so that we catch something else. Yeah, we weren't happy. Yeah, isn't it interesting how God how God works? Well, I mean, I, I, I saw Jesus closer than I wanted to this weekend particularly, but she drove the first leg down to Vanderbilt, so she was going to drive over past Columbus, and it was nice to have a little bit of a break. I don't relax real well in the car when anybody else is driving, especially a kid that I put her diapers on, and she's this little baby driving. But she was doing great. We're going down the road, and like we've all done, she, she didn't look all the way over her left shoulder as she went to move into that lane, and there was a car right there. So we're going whatever the speed is, and you know, all of a sudden now we're going rear, rear, rear down the road, and it was nice because it was peaceful, and you know, my life, it was neat to see my life again go by. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, we didn't yell and scream. There was no cursing. It was, you just, you know, hey, well, we're okay as we're moving. I don't know why that's, I was like, okay, okay, okay as we're sliding. Rrr, rrr, rrr. But, uh, you know, we giggled about it, laughed about it. It was a nice learning experience, and uh, I'm just thankful that, you know, I, I know accidents happen on, on the roadways, and, and we'll be in those. We've been in those, and we will be again. But it was nice that that one didn't have to be a serious one. And, and we could giggle and laugh about it a little bit down the road. She said she said I could go back to resting after that. <laughs> after I get my fingers out of the ceiling. <laughs> so it, it was nice that we got to progress on our trip without any tow trucks and stuff. Okay. Amen. Amen. All right. Anybody else? we got time for one more. Time for one more. Where have you seen God lately? Time for one more. I'm going to start till we have one more. Okay, one more. Isaac and I got to sing praise practice last night. Practice. And it was so fun to laugh and giggle and, and share and... Your wife is just hilarious. She's really, we couldn't get her to stop cutting up, practicing, so, because yeah, Isaac and I are pretty serious when we're practicing. Yeah. 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 Chuck, back me up. Chuck, back me up on that. You're backing up as far as you can. <laughs> but it was, it was nice to hear her giggle, and it, I know God wants us to laugh and have fun, and we weren't laughing at, or we were enjoying each other's company, and it was fun. So I, I really did enjoy making her giggle. It was Quite, it's too easy to make her giggle, but it was nice to make her giggle. It was good fun. Yes. Yeah. Right. Until Sunday, we worked up a little something special for everybody. <laughs> it was Janine's idea, too. We're, we're going to end on that note because I don't know where that note is. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and Rick, Isaac, get up here, bud, and pass these out for me. You got those young legs? And broken oh, leg. broken. What'd you do? It's okay, make my crippled son pass well, it. Well, I did, yeah. <laughs> what did you get that? What did you have that put on? Uh, I'm going to talk to Lisa because she's today, the only one. Who... We went Monday night to Manic Swiss, but, or to uh, Reynolds Rapid Care. We don't know what he did to it, but it was hurting, and they think he has a hairline fracture, but oh. they x-rayed it, and it was you know swollen and everything, and they said it doesn't show anything the first so many days, so we have to wear that for two weeks and get three x-rayed. No. Okay. All right, not that I don't have any sympathy, but uh, hurry up, pass them out, Isaac. All right. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through the Son. And so uh, here we're kind of rolling on, on our uh, uh, study of false religions and, and cults. And uh, today we're going to do New Age, and, and that's kind of conglomeration, kind of like Hinduism a little bit. We're going to, we're going to talk about all that. But um, next week is our annual business meeting, and then the week after that we're going to do Jehovah's Witness. The week after that we're going to do Scientology. The week after that, uh, then we're going to do Catholicism. I am not calling Catholicism a false religion. I am not saying that. But there are some marked differences between uh, Evangelical and Catholicism. And a lot of people don't know what they are, so we're going to actually we're going to go into some church history and that kind of stuff. And then the last week, though, we're going to wrap this up. We're going to look at the Amish and what do the Amish believe theologically, and and what are some differences. So those are some things coming up. Uh, but uh, tonight we're going to be looking at New Age, and and it, it, it's interesting. 
New Age, I had thought that it was kind of uh, uh, waning a little bit, that it was kind of uh, winding down, but I, I think it's becoming more mainline. I think it's becoming more and more acceptable to so where people, and, and we're going to see this we're going, as we go through this, you're going to see this where, where people don't realize, and, and that's one of the dangers of false religions or false cults, is uh, we talked about, you know, well, karma will get you, as we talked about with Hinduism. So many tenets of false religions have crept into our, our culture and our, even our vocabulary that we don't realize their origins. And, and so we're going to look at a lot of New Age has snuck into the main, main population. And we need to identify that. All right, so let's look at some of the history. 1875, Helena Blavaticus uh, founded the Theosophical Society. Theosophical. Of course, uh, Theo is, is the Latin word for what? God. God. And then Sof, Sophos, Sophi is the Latin word for? Studios. You're thinking of ology. Uh, uh, in wisdom. wisdom, wisdom, and and so basically she's she's kind of combining the God and wisdom. Uh, theosophical means God's wisdom, and and she believed that Helena did that all religions had common truths, but that not one was the entire truth. Boy, does that sound like where our world is at right now, doesn't it? And the goal of the society was for members to become illuminated or enlightened. But this is fascinating. The members signed a pledge of secrecy to belong. So they want to become illuminated. And when you become illuminated, what happens? When you light a candle, what happens? You shine. But what they're doing is they're going secret. And they're going underground, so to speak. Many of the members were respected clergy and businessmen. Thomas Edison joined the group in 1878 according to their records. And I, I did a lot of research and I, I couldn't find yay or nay uh, whether he, he was there. there. Nothing was conclusive. But according to their records, he was a member of this. Uh, in 1875, she moves the society from New York to India. Because what, what's happening in India? <coughs> Hinduism, Buddhism, and really, what, what is the crux of, especially Hinduism? What's the crux of Hinduism? Becoming enlightened? Yes. Don't eat cows. Don't eat cows, yes. <laughs> I'm not asking a very good question. Um, the main underlying kind of component of Hinduism, you, you can have whatever God you want. Mm -hmm. You mix and match. Remember, some believe in Shiva, some believe... Uh, you know, in Varna, some believe in Brahma, and, and you can, if you want to believe that Shiva's the top and Brahma's the, the lowest, you can do that. If you want to believe Brahma's the top and, and Vindu is, is second, you can mix and match. And so what's happening is she finds that, that uh, New York City is, is not, New York is, is not as receptive, so she moves to India. In 1891, she, Helena died, and Annie Bissett succeeded her. And she led her me the members of the group to try to conjure up the Antichrist, but she failed. Why? So, because why she, wanted to. she wants to come up with the, to have the Antichrist to, to topple what? The church. Oh. So, because in Scripture it talks about when the Antichrist comes, then there's going to be trouble, <laughs> persecution, and tribulation for the church. And, and so what happens is she wants to, the Antichrist to come so that the truth is knocked down. Okay. The church is knocked down. Now because of this failure, she was replaced. And her replacement was Alice Ann Bailey. Now she had originally married an Episcopal priest, but sadly he beat her and she renounced Christianity. You know, I think on Judgment Day there's going to be a lot of answering to do by Christians. Because a lot of times, maybe Christians' behavior towards someone, maybe they've been on the fence. And, and because they've seen something in a Christian, they said, I can't, if that's, if that's their God, I don't want to have anything to do with it. Uh, we, we blew it with, with uh, uh, Gandhi, Indira Gandhi. We, we blew it with Mahatma Gandhi because what happened is, he was, as a young lawyer, he, he moved to South Africa, and he actually said he wanted to become a Christian. He wanted to become a Christian. He went on a Sunday night, he went to a church, 
And there were only a few people there, and they were like, well, there's not even enough of us here, so we're not going to do anything, and so let's just go home. And so he thought, wait a second. And he, he studied the Bible. Oh, Mahatma Gandhi probably knew the Bible more better than most Christians. He studied the Bible, and he says, man, this book talks about miracles. This book talks about God is in powerful. This talks about, and I'm not seeing it. And so Gandhi had a famous quote that said, I, I love Christ, but I have not seen anyone follow him. And so imagine what would have happened if, if he would have seen a, a, a Christian who would have taken him in and discipled him and loved on him. I mean, because Gandhi goes on to be a, a phenomenal leader, basically standing up uh, to, to Great Britain and, and leading the independence. So, I mean, here, here we see is, is here's another opportunity where we as Christians, we don't know what impact we have. And, and we may have impact on people that we have no idea. And so that's why it's so important for us to live our talk, to make sure what we're saying here and here is how our lives are acting. So she uh, uh, renounced Christianity. She remarried Foster Bailey, and they wrote over 20 books about it, what it meant to learn from the masters. Now, now this is fascinating because who is making the masters? They are. And, and this is where we're at today as a culture, is right now people are making themselves authority. There is an ultimate authority, and his name is God. And, and, and that's why today, uh, I, I just was having a very, very intense discussion with, with someone yesterday. I said, here's, here's, here's a whole gender issue. No one's going to tell me if I'm a boy or if I'm a girl. I could be a boy Monday and I could be a girl Tuesday. Because there's no authority. But there is authority. And, and that's the whole, that's what it makes, boils down to, folks. It all boils down to people do not want to deal with or to admit there's a high authority. And, and so here's what we see is, is, is this is exactly, is, is, is here uh, Foster and, and Alice, they said this is how you have to learn from the masters. Dylan, do you have a question, bud? That's right. That's right. All right. Thank you. All right. They also established the Arcane School, the new group of, group of world servers, triangles, and many other organizations. And the, the Baileys featured uh, New Age beliefs in such, as much as its uh, founder did. So they really are, 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 are strong leaders. Of 1922, they established Lucifer Publishing Company. Anytime you have the name Lucifer in your company, that's not a good company. Just trying to tell you that. Well, they published a magazine entitled Lucifer. They did get some feedback, and so the next year they named it to the Lucius Publishing Company. Now, now this is what's so fascinating is, is you're going to see a lot of false religions. They start out saying, we're going to do this, and then they get feedback, so they just rename it. And many Christians fall prey to it because they don't know the terminology. Many Christians fall because they, they don't know. Oh, well, that sounds like Lucius Publishing Company. That sounds wonderful. Uh, you know, maybe Lucius has something to do with light. No, it doesn't. It has to do with whatever. So 1962 in Finhorn, Scotland, it becomes the home of the New Agers. Peter and Eileen Caddy, they founded the plan. And they, they heard voices from spiritual beings telling them what to do. And I, I believe absolutely there were spiritual beings telling them what to do, but they were not good spiritual beings. There is spiritual warfare. There was a man named David Spangler, drawn to the group, and he, he uh, entered leadership, and he claimed many demonic encounters as well as uh, contacts with the UFOs. And Spangler wrote a book called Revelation, The Birth of a New Age. And this is a, a kind of a, a, I don't want to say a Bible form, but it's kind of a, of one of their, their stock books. 1973, Spangler moved the group to Madison, Wisconsin, and he established the Lorraine Association. 1975, they moved to Palo Alto, California. Now, the group still had secret membership. But in 1975, Alice Bailey told Spangler that the New Ager should come out of hiding and go public. What's happened in our country in the 70s? 
Where's my historians? The the At the end of it, yeah. Vietnam War is winding down. What, what, what happened in the 60s? The hippies era. I'm sorry? The hippies era. I was the, born. The, <laughs> and we're so glad. The no, hippies era. That explains the law. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ed Peters had hair down the middle of his back. <laughs> Were you ever a hippie, Ed? <laughs> I don't know why, I just felt, when Tom was a hippie, oh my, uh, and, and so really the, the 60s, what's that, space, so you're, you're expanding boundaries, and you just dealt with question authority, the 60s, the rebellion, JFK was assassinated November 22nd, 1963, and also uh, uh, C.S. Lewis died that day as well, the man who wrote the, the Chronicles of uh, Narnia. And, and uh, many, 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 many other books. But so you, you see what's going on, and, and so it's becoming more accessible. So what they've done is, is they, the New Agers come out of hiding. In 1975, the New Agers come out of hiding, and they go public. So at this point, they're starting to say, hey, we're a real religion. We're, we're a real faith system. Now, currently... There's countless New Age groups and beliefs. And if you'll notice, if you go into a bookstore, most bookstores have a section. What does that section say? Oh, New, New Age. Age. And, and so it's kind of like Hinduism. It really is mix and match, and we're going to talk a lot, a little bit about that. So one publication that the majority of New Agers follows, follow is, is by Marilyn Ferguson entitled Brain Mind Bulletin. So if you, if you see anyone brain mind M-I-N-D, bulletin. If you see anyone reading that, then that will give you an, an indication kind of where they're at. So here's, here's some common beliefs. And again, remember, you, you can't pigeonhole, if a person says, I'm a new ager, you, you can't pigeonhole because it, it can mean a whole plethora of things. It can mean a whole bunch kind of mixed together. But uh, some of the common beliefs, the majority of the new agers believe all is God. Everything is God. Plants are God, snails are God, books are God, chairs are God, people are God. Everything makes up God. So we're all God. The chair is God. The table is God. That, that, that everything is God. That this, is, this is very interesting. God is a force or entity or whatever we want God to be. So what, what is happening right now? What happens in this movement? Who becomes God? Everyone, yes, and, and, and even more so than that, I become God, and why? Because whatever I want, but also because I am identifying God. I am, I am, I am saying this is God, and since I have the power to say this is God, what does that make me? God. God. And, and so that's what, you, you know, you, you can kind of see what has happened. And that's happened in our culture. It's, it happens in our culture right now. It, you know, it amazes me what's going on with Hollywood right now. I mean, it, 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 it is amazing because all of this junk has always been going on. But now it's hip to, to say, I, I was molested. And, and if, any, if any woman is ever molested or assaulted, that is terrible. It is wrong. But it, it amazes me. They've been doing this stuff all along. But the truth has not come out because it didn't serve them. Now it serves them. Now they're getting their five minutes of 15 minutes of fame. And, and so all of this is, is it, it, this is so biblical in so many ways. Our culture is basically trying to make itself God. And, and so that's kind of where New Agers are coming from. <laughs> and they believe our ignorance keeps us from realizing our divine reality. So it, it's because of our ignorance, we don't know. One of the most well-known leaders is, is called Swami Matanananda, I think. And this is what he said. This was his teaching. Kneel to your own self. Honor and worship your own being. God dwells within you as you. There is a, yes, in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, it talks about that the, our body is a temple, a temple of the Holy Spirit. But yes, they take that to be, we are God. Yes, the false religions take, they take the truth and they, and they pervert it. 
So they believe that in order to realize people's divine reality, they have to change their consciousness. And so this alters their self-realization until they discover who they are. So before you go to New Age, you really don't know that, you know, you could make up God, or you could be God, or you are God. But you've got to come to New Age to, to find the truth, is what they're saying. New Agers also believe, and if this is not our world, I don't know what it is. New Agers also believe that we make our own truth. We make our own truth. If we do not believe something is true, then it doesn't have to be true for us. And that is what has happened to our culture right now. And that is, is, is going on in, in such a, a dangerous way. Well, there's three groupings, major groupings of New Agers. Spiritual, pagan, and metaphysical. So there's, you've got three groupings of the New Agers. Spiritual. They believe there is no heaven or hell. So if, if there's no hell, then what, what, is, what, what, what does that mean? No punishment. So what, what does that mean? Don't matter. It don't matter. You can do whatever you want. And, and one of the huge New Age uh, proponents was a guy named John Lennon. And he had a huge, huge platform. His song, imagine there's what? No heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell or... I don't know the rest of the song. Below us. Oh, we're seeing who the pagans are. No, no, I'm teasing, I'm teasing, I'm teasing. I just like you. <laughs> and, and, and so and what, that's what happens is, is so many times is, you know, I, I, we did a, when I was a youth pastor, uh, uh, I said it's amazing how many, how messages of music we get sucked into without realizing message. And uh, I had little, I had teenagers and I said, you know, I found my thrills, where? Shame on you for knowing that. That's a song about I believe immorality. It. But yet we know it. Think about it. Well, don't think too much about it. But I'm saying, yeah, stop thinking about it. Uh, settle down. Especially you. Look at these three back here. Okay, quit talking about it. All right, ladies, settle down. Um, and so, here, you know, here, here what we have is, is, is that's a situation where the false stuff infiltrates us where we don't even realize it. It took me to become an adult that I realized some of the songs, I didn't even know the whole words, but even the words I sang, they made no sense, but I didn't even realize what I was singing. Right. The parts I right. knew made no sense, and then I right. came to realize as an adult, oh my. Right. <laughs> they right. sounded neat, did they? Neat rhythm. And sure, yeah. sure. Oh, I remember when we were in, in eighth grade, we were in the, in the youth van, and our, our, our we, well, we worked on our youth leader. As long as the you know, song didn't have cuss words or bad, yeah. don't listen to this, don't listen to this. Uh, as long as they didn't have any cuss words or anything like that, could they play them? But our, but our youth leaders, they couldn't, they were, they were old. Uh, they, were, they were younger than I am now. And, and, and they were old, though. And so we got them played, listened to the secular radio, and there was a song, If You Want to Get Down, Down to the Ground, Cocaine. And they're sitting there tapping, boy, this has got a good beat. <laughs> and so whenever I said cocaine, we were like, yeah, rock and roll, you know. <laughs> I don't know where we're going. So anyway, but it's amazing how it, it, it infiltrates in there. All right. The, the spiritual, there's no heaven or hell. They follow the Book of the Dead, which comes from the Egyptians. 1895, it was translated into English. And, and the Book of the Dead is, is a collection of funeral texts, hymns, and prayers. And in, in the Book of the Dead, it says that after one dies, you have to pass 42 tests in the Hall of Osiris, the god of the underworld. <clears throat> And, and so in order to move on, you've got to pass 42 tests. I, I tell you what, praise God that as Christians when we die, the only, there's no test. It, it's well done. And here's We're, the funny thing on that. They're saying the God of the underworld. Well, right. The underworld would be the bad things. Right. But you have to go through there to get <laughs> up. Now that Osiris, that's like the Shrine or Osiris Temple? That's another one. Huh? Oh, yeah. We've got another week coming. Up. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and uh, you know, it's very interesting. The early church of God preached against masons and shiners because there's a lot of false stuff wrapped up in there. There's a lot of stuff that, that uh, really is very interesting. So, um, well, they think that, that what is in the book of the dead, it'll help you to pass the tests. 
So if you study the Book of the Dead, then when you die, you got the 42 answers. You, you got the answer to pass the 42 tests. Well, the spiritual New Agers, they want to expand their awareness. And, and, and they can do this by, by several means. They're expanding their awareness, and they do it by hyperventilation, hypnosis, biofeedback, positive thinking, yoga, and meditation, martial arts, isolation tanks, and near-death experience. And you see a lot of these, and, and there are, it's, when you, when you look at yoga and Lamar Sharks, there are Christian yoga groups, and there are Christian martial art groups. But when you look at the, the bulk of, of it, you look at the origins, this was an entryway. It was an entryway into, into, into connect with people. It was an entryway to, to get in that. So um, what they basically do is, is you, you just have to become more aware. And so that's the spiritual. Why? Sue? How did you the near-death experience? Did they actually try to do something just to point Yep. How did they mess up? Well, they did. Yeah, they did. Yes, yeah, yeah. And, and, and think about it for a second. A lot of these things, uh, a lot of these things, what, what, what happens, uh, hyperventilation and, and uh, what happens in the near-death experience? What, what happens? What is going on physiologically? Your, your adrenaline. Your adrenaline is... <laughs> rush of endorphins after you survive it. You feel really good after you, like a roller coaster. So what, what happens is when there's that release of, uh, of adrenaline from, from our system, then what that does is that kicks in the endomorphins, which, which create pleasure and, and uh, kind of relaxation. Uh, but then what happens after that, when that all kind of goes through our system? Right. We, we go through a natural depression. We go through a natural depression. That's why they, they physiologically, they've studied pastors. They said Monday's a tough day. Because on Sunday, they'd give them the best they could, and Monday, so you know, if, if you're going to complain, don't come on Monday. Because <laughs> I, I may not be nice. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm and, and so um, that actually is, is, is true. They've studied that. And so what, if you're trying to get all that natural adrenaline running through, you're trying to kind of always be hyped, what do you have to do the next time? Worse. More and more and more and more and more. And, and so you can kind of see how this sucks you in. So that's a spiritual New Agers. Uh, the pagan one, uh, this is the pledge to pagan spirituality. I know that I am a part of the whole of nature. May I grow in my understanding of the unity of all nature. May I always be mindful that I create my own reality and that I have the power within me to create positivity in my life. May I always be mindful that the goddess and God in all their forms dwell within me and that this divinity is reflected through my own self, my pagan spirit. So uh, a pagan New Ager, who is God? Yeah, yeah, we are God. As a, as a pagan New Ager, then, then we become the God, because that is actually their, their, uh, their pledge. And I, uh, this is fascinating, this is actually taken from a, uh, the top website of New Age Pagan Beliefs is Pagans practice a variety of positive life affirming faiths that are dedicated to healing the people of Earth as well as Earth itself. So a Pagan believes that they have the power to heal. Now there is healing, but there's only one healer and his name is Jesus. And, and God is the healer. Now, God heals through people. I believe that God gifts doctors and nurses, and I, I believe that incredibly. God heals through them, but God, they do not heal. And, and so what happens is, is pagans believe that they can heal the people, and also many, many pagans are, are uh, very, very earth conscious because they can heal the earth. Uh, oils and rubbing dirt and eating crystals. And We're going to talk about that kind of My stuff. My wife's not in here right now. so you can She has fancy oils in her drawer, so I'll tell her she's a pagan. Oh. Thank oh. her. I told her it was bad stuff. 
lavender oil to cure a headache. You know, it's of the devil. I'll tell her. Thank you, Pastor. I appreciate that. You will tell her. You do not say Pastor said that. Now, as such, we do not advocate or condone acts that victimize others, including those prescribed by the law. Number two, pagans do not acknowledge, believe in, or worship a Satan or devil. They believe these are Old Testament Christian symbols that have been connected in many ways to pagans, and many pagans out of fear of misunderstanding. And, and so, again, see, this, this is where this, this, this mentality doesn't make any sense. So if we're all God, if we're all good... How do you know what good is? You, you, you have to have, you, you have to have, how, how do we know it's, it's, it's light in this room? Because we can see, and when it's dark, we know the difference. And, and that's why sometimes when I talk to, to atheists, um, I'll say to them, I'll say, uh, was Hitler bad? Oh, Hitler was bad. Well, you can't say Hitler's bad unless there is a good. You can't have an evil unless there's an ultimate good. And because if, if there was no good, then Hitler would be normal. And, and so that's what we, that's what, but what the pagans are doing is the pagans are saying, well, there, there's no devil, there's no Satan, it's just all been misunderstood. We're all God. And that, that's just something they made up in the Old Testament. Now this is fascinating. Pagans do not practice black magic or desecrate any person, place, or thing. So here's where you get into, oh, is there black magic and good and white magic? It's all devil magic. And, and we need to understand that. And, and, and sometimes you will run across someone that says, oh, I'm into the white magic, so I'm into good. It's, it's good. And what they're saying is they're pagan new, new agers. And it's just as evil and just as false as, as any other type of new ager or any type of uh, false religion. And, and so that's, that's another thing is, is our, our culture, you know, okay, well, there's black magic and those guys are bad, but there's white magic and that's good because that's only for the good. No, they're still promoting themselves as God. And number three, this is interesting. Pagans do not proselytize. No one will try to convince you to become a pagan. Sure. Sure. Now, including in the pagan grouping of New Age is Wicca. And in 1981, in London, Wiccans produced a statement. And they said, Wicca is both a religion and a craft, and as a religion like any other religion, its purpose is to put the individual and the group in harmony with the divine creative principle of the cosmos and its manifestations at all levels. As a craft, its purpose is to achieve practical ends by psychic means, look at this, for good, useful, and healing purposes. So, so who is becoming the, the healers? Who are becoming the dispensers of good? The people. The people. In both aspects, the distinguishing characteristics of Wicca are, are, are its nature-based attitude, its small group autonomy with no gulf between priesthood and congregation, and its philosophy of creative polarity at all levels, from goddess and god to priestess and priest. So what, what happens in, in, in Wicca is, is basically we're, we're, we're not bad. We're just all doing white magic. We're, we're doing all good. We only want what's best for everybody. But it's still the same as everything else. Erica. So my aunt says that, my aunt claims that she's Wiccan. Mm -hmm. And she says that she doesn't do magic, but that there's like a demon in her house. Like, so is that, is that because she actually does magic and she just lies about it? I would say that. Yeah. And folks, this is this is reality. There is spiritual warfare. You know, and that in, and in Moundsville, you know, we have we have a whole whole infestation here. You know, when I do tours at the pen, it's constantly uh, uh, you know, is this haunted? I'll say, I don't know. <laughs> I can tell you the history. You know, and I told you the story of the one woman on a tour, boy, she was after me, the ghost and the ghost, and I was like, oh my goodness. So finally I told her, okay, ma'am, there are ghosts, and I have a ghost. <gasps> you do? You do? I said, yeah, his name's a holy ghost. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, hang on, hang on, Dylan. All right. Now in Britain, there are four main Wiccan traditions, Gardnerian, Alexandrian, Hereditary, and Traditional. And there's other groups in the United States, but they basically evolve from these four. It, it, isn't it so true in the United States? We just got to be different. <laughs> if, if someone does it over in the world, we, we got to change it and make it our own. Uh, it's our, our spirit, I guess. 
Well, Wicca and witches, uh, because that's another, you have witches, and again, in, in, in their system, you will have good ones and bad ones. And so someone says, well, I'm a good witch, so you know, we're on the same side. No, there's no such thing. It's, it's all pagan New Agers. But uh, they celebrate eight seasonal festivals called Sabbaths. And this just bothers me so much because where do they get the word Sabbath? Sabbath. Sabbath. From the Hebrew, Sabbat, which means rest or cessation. So isn't it interesting that, that false religions all take from the truth? But they take the truth and they twist it a little bit. Now, the rituals are conducted out of doors and, and involve rites and rituals. And they believe a witch ritual is a means of contacting the divine beyond our individual lives, but also a way of understanding our inner psyche and, connect, and contacting the divine within. So what are, what are they saying? Because remember, what, what do New Agers say? What's God? Everything. everything is God, and I'm God, so i got to get my God and the, and the chair of God to be one, and everything will be cool. And, and so that's what they're trying to do. And do you see how dangerous it is? Because what is that lifting, what is that lifting up? Me. Us. It's, it's promoting us as gods. One must be trained in Wicca through a local teacher or coven. And, and pagan New Agers believe strongly in spells, and, and this is sacred sexuality. They also believe in spirit guides. And, and one of the, uh, uh, very fascinating, when we were youth pastors in Southern California, there's strong, huge satanic influence there. And one of the first things that, that they do when they get a person in, in, a, in a covenant or they get them in a, in a Wiccan tradition, the first thing they'll do is they'll say, you have to blast in the Holy Spirit. You have to say, I blaspheme the Holy Spirit. And, and then what happens is, because in Scripture it says the only unforgivable sin is what? Blaspheme the Holy Spirit. But that we mistranslate that so bad. Because what it is, is, is the Greek word says continue. The Greek words means you're continually blaspheming the Holy Spirit. It's not that you say, oh, I'm mad at you, God. It's, it's you keep doing it. Because what sin can you not be forgiven of? I'm not asking for forgiveness. You continually blaspheme. Right. You continually reject. And so that's what that passage means. Right. But what happens is that's what they do. And so then they get the young people because in the young people, then they say, oh, you can't, God won't take you back now. So you got to stay with us. And it amazed me how many young people that we worked with that we had to say, no, 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 no. This is what this passage means. This is what this passage is saying. And, and so I know a lot of people that, that have, have gone through that. So Martha? I have two cousins uh, that are heavily into it. Uh, uh, one of my cousins is one of the top dogs in, in California. And she grew up uh, more. Her father was was extremely, extremely godly until he turned from the Lord. That's why, I, you know, people say, well, what you say, George? Say, that's nonsense. Uh, I've known people who have been extremely godly, and then they turn the other side. And, and he, he kind of flipped out and, and a whole lot of stuff. And so one of my cousins is, is a very, is one of the top bad uh, Wiccans in the state of California. And it's interesting, we, we don't get together often, maybe once every five, seven years, give or take. But what's fascinating is where in Ask Janine, whenever I'm, whenever I'm there, those two just, they make a beeline towards me. 
and, and it fascinates Janine because she says, why would they want to be around you? And, and they, because they recognize there's power in God. And, 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 you know, they see the truth. I mean, the demons see the truth, folks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Demons know Scripture. Demon, that's why you got to know Scripture. Because what demons do is they'll take Scripture, and what did Satan do with Eve? Did God really say this? And if we don't know it, well, no, that's true. And, and so this is uh, what, what happens is it, it's out there. So um, we just need to be aware of that. And, and, and this, again, this is, it gets into our, our main line it gets into our mainline shows. It gets into our, our, our media. It, you know, it, it really amazes me as a country. We get so upset at mass shootings, but what, we pay $22 to go to a movie and watch people kill each other. Yeah. Video games. Video games. It, it, Songs. You know, it amazes me. We as a culture, we celebrate it and worship it, but then get mad when it happens. Uh, one, one of my very favorite kids I love her Halloween outfit was blood and guts and intestines hanging out. Yeah. I don't think the people who people died in New York yesterday would find that attractive. No. It's hard to that that's what really brought home to me was that's not funny. Right. You just came from a funeral and I'm gonna trick or treat at your door tonight. Right. I don't think that's very funny probably yeah. I imagine in their hearts. And and that's that's where our world is at right now is is because we're making our truth it's funny to me, so that's the truth. But I've been that calloused, I'm sure. Well, and, and we get sucked in. Yeah. That a lot of false religions, they, they kind of grab hold of us, and we, we, we do them without knowing. That's why when a Christian says, oh, it's karma, that I'm just, ooh, no, it's not. <laughs> caramel. Yeah, Lord. Car caramel? <laughs> well, caramel's okay. That's bad caramel. No, you can have good caramel, though. <laughs> so, all right. Um, uh, metaphysical. Metaphysical. So the metaphysical New Agers, they believe in energies and feelings. Notice I said that one because like, there's three E's. <laughs> feelings. Because guys don't have any feelings. The women get together with those guys and say, I want to talk about our feelings. And ladies, when you say you want to talk about your feelings, you know what that does to a man? Oh. <laughs> I'm just telling you my feelings. All right. Now, uh, metaphysical, they strongly believe that they possess their own truth and can influence and even create that truth. They can create that truth. Crystals, Stonehenge is a huge, huge, huge gathering. Uh, you know, Stonehenge would be rocks. Uh, crop circles. Crop circles are really big. And nature is very important to the metaphysical. The strongest influence of metaphysical New Agers is psychics and astrology. And remember, as we talked about the constellations, the constellations were created in the sky for what? Christians. Uh, tell the story of God. It, it is the gospel story. It's the billboard. You cannot not see the gospel in the, in the constellations. And, and so what does Satan have to do then? That's the truth. What does Satan have to do? Twist it a little. Twist it a little bit. So, and alternative medicines. Now, I'm not saying that if you take a herb that you're metaphysical, new, don't you write it. I, I know, don't you. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I believe that, that God uses all kinds of things to heal. But notice what I just said. God uses those. Not, not we don't create that. Notice the difference. So, All right. This actually came from a metaphysical uh, New Ager website. And it says, all humanity, including all life, Everything in the universe is spiritually interconnected, participate in the same energy, and God is one name for this energy. And, and so that's where, you know, people, uh, oh, I see an aura, and that's, that, is, that, is of the Lord. that is not of the Lord. That, that is satanic. That's that energy. And that's what I, I was talking to, a, a person who claims Christianity, uh, that ghost hunts, and, and they said, well, it's the energy that's left behind. I said, that's bad news. Anything left behind is not a good God, and it's not left behind, theologically. The Bible doesn't say, the Bible doesn't say that you're going to die, and then you're going to hang around until you accomplish something you shouldn't. That's not what the scripture says. The scripture says you're going to die and appear before the Lord. Absent from the body, you're what? Present before God, Lord. the Lord. So, um, so God is this energy. So in other words, who's God? We all are. 
Uh, spiritual beings, uh, beings, angels, ascended masters, again, you're going to the masters, elemental, ghosts, space aliens exist, and will guide us if we open ourselves to their guidance. Uh, the human mind has deep levels and vast powers which are capable even of overriding physical reality. You create your own reality. Uh, the probably, I've only seen my mother upset. I, I, don't, I don't think I've seen my mother upset more than three or four times. Really upset. And one of them was I was in high school and we had a teacher that was doing this garbage. And I didn't believe it, but I went home and told mom, hey mom, you know what? We create our own reality. Woo! She said, she grabbed me, she said, we're going to go to the hospital and find someone with cancer tell them that they don't have cancer. They just have to create their own reality. She was not happy. I will never forget that. Yeah. And, and so, you know, you can't create your own reality. That's not reality. That's your own world. So, nevertheless, uh, this is their website. This is subject to certain spiritual laws, such as the purpose, principle of cause and effect, or karma. This is word for word coming from their teachings. And when you put it against the word of God, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, this one's interesting. Death is not the end. There's only life in different forms. What some have referred to as afterlife doesn't punish us, but teaches us, perhaps through the mechanisms of right reincarnation or near-death experiences. So again, if there's no, if there's no, if, if if there's no afterlife, what does that mean? You can do whatever you want. I, I mean, if there's no afterlife, you can you can be as good or as bad, and and you know, okay, next next life, if you're if you come back as a as a frog, well, be a good frog, and then then you'll come back as a, a dog, and be a good dog, and then you'll eventually come back as a person. I mean, you don't have to do anything. And so, what what happens then for people? People think, I've got to, I can do whatever I want. But here's the facts. There are consequences to sin. And, and if there's sin in our life, there will be consequences to it. Now, the this is, this, ooh, this makes me mad. The Bible is considered by some, but not all, to be a wise and holy book. Many important truths are found in the Bible. Some say that Jesus was an Essene, or that he traveled to India in his youth to study Eastern religions. Others say Jesus was a later avatar of Buddha. And so what, what are they doing to what are they doing to knock down God? The deity. the deity. They're taking away the deity. Isn't it always interesting? People don't argue about Muhammad. People don't argue about knocking down Buddha. Why? Because there's no power. And they were clearly people. They were people, people. And, and so what happens is, is this is why the enemy, the enemy knows how to go after something. Meditation, yoga, tai chi, and other Eastern practices are valuable and worthwhile. All our relationships are de destined to be repeated until they're healed, if necessary, over many lifetimes. So if you have a problem with someone, you're going to be reincarnating until that person and you and, and you. Here, here's the wild thing, because I that one I thought I got to research that one further. So what what happens is. Is if if if, if Janine and I have a problem, then when I die, I'm going to be reincarnated as as um, Mike, and she's going to be reincarnated as as Karen, and, and and so what happens is is if we then are okay, then we've healed the problem of CJ and Janine. But if Mike and Karen have a problem, then I'm going to be reincarnated as Don, and she's going to be reincarnated as Debbie. Do you see that? Until the relationships are healed. So, ladies, you cannot go back and say, who are you to your husband? <laughs> so, all right. Um, an appeal to the languages of nature, mathematics, as evidenced by numerology and Kabbalah. And Kabbalah is basically a, 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 an Old Testament Jewish kind of mysticism. It's uh, basically all numerology and stuff like that. Um, there was a famous actress that... And she just moved out of the country, which actually I, I respect her for that because she said, if Donald Trump gets elected, I'm moving out. And she did. So I do respect that because I wish all the Hollywood actors that said they would move out. <laughs> and, you know what? They've lied because they didn't move. Cher said she's going to go to the bars. Well, see you, Cher. But anyway, and I'm not being political for or against Trump. I'm just saying if you make a statement, you better back it up. But this one did. This one did. And, and does anyone know she's a famous singer? Uh, that uh, actually Kabbalah is, is practicing Kabbalah and is making it pretty well known. Madonna. 
Yeah, Madonna. Yeah. What took her so long? Yeah, what took Madonna so long? So anyway, um, anyway, well, they in Gnosticism. Gnosticism has been around all along. Gnosticism, matter of fact, Gnosticism. <coughs> oh, it's getting time again. Gnosticism. I know you'll take the clock. I just Gnosticism is, is basically been along around since since uh, even when Christ was here on earth. And Gnosticism, the root word is knowledge. Gnosti is, is a is Latin word for knowledge. And what they say is, is that, that Jesus really didn't die on the cross. He, he just was kind of hovering on the cross because Jesus is God, so God can't die. So, so Jesus kind of was in front of the cross acting like he was dying. And, and so you, you, have to have, you have to become a Gnostic to believe what Jesus did. What's agnostic? Agnostic means you don't believe. You might think there's a God. You don't have that knowledge. You're not sure. Because Gnostic is the root word is knowledge. My buddy tells me he's agnostic. He says, I know there's a, I know there's a, a power. A, right. Some yeah. divine, but he don't, can't pin it down. Right. That's, that being agnostic. Is, and what you break that word down, it means, it means uh, not knowledgeable. So you're not sure. And, and that's what's very fascinating is, is you know, the, the Alcoholics Anonymous. Alcoholics, Alcoholics Anonymous was actually started by a minister. And that's why one of, one of the 12 points was there is a higher power. He couldn't come out and say there's God uh, at the time because of, yes, there's been political correctness forever. And so he said higher power. The problem is people are trying to identify what the higher power is. But there's only one higher power, and it's God. And, and so that's the problem, is, is everyone's trying to make a higher power. You don't have to make a higher power. God is God. He's already made. He, he, what is it made? He's always God. He always was, always will, always will be. So, um, so anyway, so Gnosticism. But they discern the nature of God and to minimize the discrepancies inherent in their pursuit. So in, in, in other words, it's up to them to whatever they want to believe, that's what they want to believe. So how many people follow New Age? This, there's a guy named Paul Helis. He's kind of the, the top New Age guru right now in, in the world. And he suggests that there's 10 million people in the U.S. have had some contact with New Age practices or beliefs. So that's, that's the number he's throwing out. So what can Christians do? And any time you're dealing with New Age, understand the strong demonic influence in New Age. There is a ton of demonic influence in New Age. All the way from, from Wicca to crystals to believing that, that we're all God, that, that's all demonic. And this is so important. Watch for new infiltration in schools, family members, and friends. And, and, and watch for it. Because it can see, you know, you know Halloween amazes me. Uh, and, and this is, I grew up watching Bewitched. Me too. Yeah, I did. But, you know, later as an adult, I'm starting to think, wait a second, that's demonic. Well, it's kind of cute because Elizabeth Montgomery, she's, she's a cutie. She's, you know, and she helped people. It's still demonic. And, and so we, we as a church have got to understand that that, that is, is very, very dangerous. And, and watch the infiltration. It's not cute. And, and watch as, as they're being taught in the shows and, and things like that. Um, Evaluate, this is so important, evaluate all we hear by the word of God. The Bible is our guide. Uh, someone read for me, please, uh, Deuteronomy 18, 9-13, please. When you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominable sin practices of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who burns his son or, da or daughter as an offering. Anyone who practices divination, or tells fortunes, or interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or a charmer, or a medium, or a necromancer, or one who inquires of the dead. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God is driving them out before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. So this is, I mean, it's, it's flat out scripturally saying this. What's a Galatians 5, 19 and 20 say, please? The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish, selfish ambition, dissensions, 
factions, and it goes on in 21 to keep talking about stuff. Yeah. Envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. Thank you. And, and, and so what you, what you have in that, and as it mentions witchcraft, because again, as we've seen through the pagan and, and the spiritual and the metaphysical, it, who, is, who is becoming God? We are. We are. So and the last one, take action. Don't idly allow New Age beliefs or philosophy around ourselves or loved ones. And, and, and folks, you can control what is on your television. You can control what is in your home. You can control what you look at. You, even if you're in a public place, and it's close your eyes. Leave. Uh, you know, here's the, here's the problem is, is it slowly starts to, to, to gain. And we, we allow it. When you start to allow footholds, then those footholds get wider and wider and Satan comes in. And that's what, you, you know, if I was teaching this in a public setting, I would probably have three-quarters of people say, oh, well, you're just old buddy duddies. No, this is the Word of God. And, and this is what we have to understand, you know. It, 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 is, it is very predominant in, in, in Moundsville. Uh, you know, it, it really, I believe in Moundsville, there, there's a spirit of, of, of seeking the dead. I mean, we're surrounded by Big Grave Creek, hmm? Middle Grave Creek. Little grave creep, small grave. Think about that. I mean, we're surrounded by it. And, and so what happens too often is, is people then want to, to deal with that stuff because they're saying, I'm God. Not I'm God. That they are God. And when we lift ourselves up, then who is, are we saying is not God? <laughs> yeah, he becomes us. We become him, which is new age. Questions? So, I was just going to do, uh, this is making me think about the, uh, the movie Maleficent, and then there's the descendants. And when I seen it, when I seen about that, it just made me think like they're doing away with the bad, you know, with the bad guy, everything is good. You know, yeah. Like when we were kids, there were movies were always like the good guy, the bad guy, and the good guy won. Mm -hmm. But all these new movies are like there is no. Right. Yeah. yeah. Which is so dangerous be, because you, there is good and bad. But if they can normalize, then again, that, that gets to authority and that gets to truth. But we've rebelled, we've rebelled against authority since the beginning. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't yeah. make it right. Right. You know it's right. not a new idea to rebel right. against authority. Right. It's just more blatant, maybe. I, I think we're in the end times. Not listening to God after you told me not to eat the tree. That's pretty blatant, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dylan? I was going to say that when you're like, who was your aunt or something? Yeah, like, okay, she had a demon in her own She probably brought, brought that demon into her home. Uh, yeah, we don't, we don't know. So. Um, so anyway, just be very careful. Be very careful, and and I know a lot of a lot of Christians. Well, you know, I I, I know I know God, and and, and so uh, you know I'm okay. Uh, be careful. An unguarded strength is a double weakness. It's a good quote. I didn't come up with it. George McDonald did. Gordon McDonald did. In my junior church class, I try to teach the kids how to identify the cracks. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. Good. I follow the devil needs. Yep. Cracks. Yep. Yep. He get his fingers in there, and then I show him how to slam the door on them. Yeah. And, and what happens if we're a dam holding water back? What happens if there's a little fissure or crack? It eventually, it will you know, over time. And that's what, you know, watch, watch what is, is, is on, uh, you know, watch what is, is the, the culture. Watch what the culture is doing because it really, the New Age is huge. But we don't know it or we don't recognize it or we don't think about it. Not me. <laughs> no. Uh uh. Ouija board. Uh uh. Those are portals right into the. Those are. Oh no! The devil's a liar. Mm mm. Right. But that's how it gets in. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Yep. Yep. Yeah. No, but you're exactly right. It infiltrates us so much. So. And that's like nowadays. 
kids don't play like we used to play, but they're stuck in front of a TV. Right. Right now, they're pushing the gender and the bisexual and everything. We, Jeff and I watch a weekly show, and I told him, I won't watch it again. I said, yeah. if, they, if they go that way, I'm not going to watch it ever again. And I, he keeps teasing me because I won't now. I said, I'm, it's just pushing it down our throats. And I think, you know, our kids watch that. Right. So children. That, be aware of what they're watching. Yeah. Be aware. So, all right, go ahead and please rise with me. And I, I want everyone, after I pray for you, go and give Rich a hug because we're never going to see him again. Because after he says to Lisa what he's going to say, he, he's never going to be seen from again. He, he, he's, he's going to be in the church. He's going to be in a ridge buried under a, under a monarch plant. Pray quick. Lord, thanks for today. And Father, let your church be the church. Let your church be the truth. Uh, and, and Father, the enemy is, is alive. And, and he, not well in a good way, but he's alive and active. And may we stand firm. May we continue to test everything by your word. May we be faithful in your study. May we be faithful in knowing you and, and looking to you. And Father, any loved ones that are wrapped up in any of this stuff, we ask that we be a living witness and a light so that they will see the truth, Lord. Let the truth be evident in our lives. And so, Father, we do pray for those involved in this yes. uh, because, Father, there are consequences and they don't get another go around at it. And so, Lord, we just ask right now that, that you will be lifted high in our lives so that others see you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.